Well, yeah, that's really, well, I started with 16 millimeter film. Um, so things are, are very different. I mean, there's lots of things I miss about film. Uh, there was a discipline with it. Uh, it was expensive. So you, I, as a director, was also an editor in the field because I'm thinking about how much film I have um, and what we've got to shoot. And, and with digital, you could just <laughs> shoot forever. It doesn't cost really anything in terms of the actual, the physical. It was $400 to buy the film and have it processed and have the mag, the sound uh, done down at Duart for 10 minutes, for just 10 minutes yeah. with 16 millimeter film. Um, it's not $400 to shoot 10 minutes of digital video. Um, uh, so I think that that, I think that that and, and working on a steam back, um, you know, there were so many times when you were trying to find a, a shot and you went by something you forgot or it hit you in a different way on this particular day. And that ended up being in the film. Now with digital, you have, you know, you just go to the, just move the mouse up to the thing, click on that shot, that scene or whatever, and you don't go through the other stuff that may contain a little piece of magic that is no longer there. So I, I'm at I'm, some levels I miss that, I miss that, that, uh, that process. And I understand why directors just still want to shoot on film, want to, want to shoot on film. Um, but I think this has also put the idea of filmmaking uh, into the hands of people who otherwise couldn't afford it uh, because digital allows essentially anybody to be a filmmaker. So that's a blessing and a curse. Ask the programmers at Sundance or anybody that get 8,000 films sent to them now every year. There's no way for them to screen and watch 8,000 films. So they have a whole bevy of screener people that do these screenings. and. Again, you don't know what might be getting missed or whatever there, but, um, but it does make it so that the working class and the poor can have their voices heard. And um, this, I, I showed a film that was shot entirely on an iPhone uh, this year, Tangerine, and, and, and uh, I, it was really a good movie. And, you, and 10 minutes into it, you forgot about the gimmick of the fact that this was being shot on an iPhone you know, because the story was so strong. So, um, but I think what I still tell when I go, when I'm asked to come to film schools or to talk or whatever, what I tell students is that, that um, first of all, sound is more important than picture and, and you need to spend money on the sound. The audience will forgive the picture. The audience will forgive it if it goes out of focus a little bit or the camera jiggles or whatever. But if they can't hear it or if they feel like they're watching cable access and it's the sound of cable access, <laughs> the film's over in the mind of the audience. They don't want to watch it. So um, I really stress the importance that sound carries the story and, um, and, and spend the money on that, spend the money on that equipment.